tell you which other league is really good, the Northeast State. And from the Northeast State, we bring in the head basketball coach of the Girard Indians, Craig Hannon. Coach Hannon, how are you today, my brother? I'm good, man. How are you? I- I'm doing well. I- I'm doing well. Let's talk a little uh, Girard Indians basketball. First and foremost, how difficult has it been for you as a basketball coach to wear a mask and to inevitably you've got to be repeating yourself a million times in practice if you have that damn mask on. <laughs> well, I'm really loud, and I think anyone that knows me knows that. So that mask doesn't really muffle me too, too much. Um, but you know what? We're used to it at this point. It's just something we like anything else. We've all had to adjust to it, players, coaches, everybody. Um, so... It's something I've adjusted to, but because I've been uh, blessed with very, very loud voice, um, it hasn't been too, too bad for me. You know, the the one advantage, and I've I've gotten a kick out of some of the coaches that, you know, you're wearing a mask, and, and, and as long as you're really not saying it all that loud, you can pretty much say whatever the heck you want to <laughs> say to an official because he can't read your lips. I mean, that's the one beautiful part of wearing a mask, I would guess. Yeah, um, some officials obviously still don't take too kindly if they run by and hear what you're saying. But, um, yeah, you can probably get away with a little more under your breath than you normally do um, in any other given year. How healthy has this team been by and large this year, Coach? Are, are you um, are you happy with, with where you guys are considering the fact that, unfortunately, Trumbull County and you guys are in Trumbull County, you, you, you got your season started pretty late? Uh, I, I feel good. I mean, this is a young group. Um, but, you know, we return a few guys that played as freshmen uh, last year. Uh, but they're, they're a really hardworking group. Um, I know when the shutdown happened, they were upset because it is a group that does really come in, work hard. They like being around each other. They're very coachable. Um, it's been frustrating just, just because um, I think they expect more from themselves. Uh, but, but you can see the improvement, and we're getting into tonight will be game 10 for us. And that's right around during a normal year where you would start to see real improvement. And I'm starting to see that from this group, which has been, you know, really nice considering, you know, we did get uh, delayed a little bit. But they they bounced back, and and I'm starting to see some things I really, really like. Coach, I've been speculating on the program, and we're three weeks away from the tournament draw uh, and obviously four weeks away from getting it started. And I've speculated if you can go north of 15 games – you should be able to have enough games where you can get into the tournaments and not really be that much different than a team that's played 20-plus games. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I mean, I, you know, once you get to that, that's a good, that's a good marker, that 15-game mark. You, you know who you are. Um, you're, you're starting to get to the point where practices aren't as long and you're not putting as much stuff in. So, yeah, I, I think most of us will be right around that mark. It, it, it should be okay. Um, once tournament time comes. And it's definitely different this year with the Super Districts. Um, you know, we, we kind of we have to do our homework based on who we play because some teams are going to have 20 games, some are going to have 10. Um, so so there, there's definitely more a little more that goes into it this year, but 15 games is a good mark to, to where you should be. When you speak with Nick Cochran and everyone who's in charge of the scheduling uh, for Gerard, is the Northeast Eight the most important aspect of of accomplishing that complete schedule before you guys start looking at non conference games between now and the end of the season, Coach? Yeah, I, I think so, and that's just a personal opinion. I know Nick's done a great job just getting us any game we can get, um, just so we can play as many as we possibly can. But I know, I know in, in conversations we've had as a staff, we want to play our Northeast State schedule because, frankly, we feel like it really gets us ready for tournament time. You know, those are good teams in there. We have Struthers in there that's undefeated. Poland's a nice team, as they usually are. You know, South Range is getting better. Jefferson and Astabula has talent. And, and the rest of the league's balanced there, too. So we wanted to play as many Northeast State games as we can because we feel like it, it will prepare you for what you're going to see come February and March. Coach, you, you've run the gamut of, of seeing a, a veteran-laden team in, in your early years at Gerard, and now you have a really, really young team. Do you find yourself being more of a teacher with the young kids, or, or is it just 
no different coaching. Oh, no. Every, every group you get is different, Ron. I mean, any coach that will tell you that, it, 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 you have to adjust to what you have. And I, I'd say, you know, my coaching staff has a lot of experience, uh, as you stated. But, but one of the things we've noticed this year is we're teaching more situational basketball where late in games, how to take care of the ball, making free throws, where when you have a senior group and you have a group that you've had for a while, they know exactly what to do and where to be. Um, and, and how to do it and won't have many questions, and they really make you as a coach look smart. So, but, but what's nice is the sophomores turn into juniors, the juniors turn into seniors. Eventually this group will get there, and I keep telling them that, you know, look, just keep doing these things, and eventually in a couple of years it's going to be very easy for you to do these small things that we're preaching on. It's a double-edged sword when you think about it because on, on a given night, uh, freshmen aren't always freshmen. You get that glimpse of – Holy crap! This is what I've got to look forward to, and it, it, you know, I mean, it's not all year long unless you have an uber talented freshman and sophomore team. Uh, but every once in a while, you'll get glimpses of they're playing like a senior, they're playing like a junior, and and I got to imagine for you, it, it's a double edged sword. Okay, it's great right now, uh, and and we're not going to be expecting this every single night. But the good news is one, two, three years down the road, oh, my goodness, are we going to be tough to beat based on what kind of talent that I have right now? Yeah, and that's the expectation. But at the same time, um, these guys also have to put the work in in the offseason. They still have to be gym rats. They still have to do all the right things in the classroom. So as nice as it can be in two years, you still have to preach, and they still have to understand that there's still some work to be done, and and it's just not going to come to you. Um, but it is nice knowing that that group is going to be, for the most part, the core of this group will be back with, for the next couple of years. Tell me something about the uh, the off season program that you guys uh, would do. I mean, obviously, in, in football players, there you stick them in the weight room, you get them, uh, you get them to be stronger for, for a long, long period of time. Basketball and baseball players, you would look at them and say, "Well, don't lift any weights." because your flexibility is going to get all kinds of screwed up. Well, in later years, they found out you don't have to lift weights per se, but there are there are different lifting exercises that actually will be helping you out tremendously. And i got to believe that that's something that's part of the off-season and conditioning program for basketball now. Oh, sure. We're actually even lifting in-season um, two days a week because that's as important as anything for injury management, um, for, for keeping strength, keeping your conditioning late. So um, it's definitely changed. I, I think kids have a really good advantage now. There's more known about lifting and, and more known about, you know, it isn't just about one program. Each, each sport, each program has their own exercises and own things that they need to be doing. And we have good people here at Gerard that do that, that know what they're talking about. Um, and I, I think this group will will buy into that. And, and you know, we've had guys in the past, guys like Austin O'Hara and Adam Conley, um, even a kid like Matt Payas who really bought into the weight room. And you can see as years went on, especially into their senior year, how, how much better they got because of that, that important aspect. Coach, we talked about COVID and being in Trumbull County. It really hit the uh, the Trumbull County schools. Let's talk a little bit about the junior varsity and below, your your junior high program, your your youth program with COVID uh, pretty much destroying basketball in the month of December, how is your youth program, junior high program, and, and junior varsity program uh, dealing with now that you're you're behind but you're up and running? Well, I think the importance in the junior high program is still always on, uh, you know, your core principles and stuff, which, you know, you want your ball skills to be well. You want them to run certain things and certain offenses that you run. So I'd say our junior high is actually dealing with it really well just because those, those that's more about a developmental level. Um, our, our junior varsity, it, it, it's been up and down. Uh, the good thing that's happened for junior varsity is uh, OSHA has allowed six quarters a night. So we've had some kids that are able to play a little bit more. And considering we didn't really have summer with summer league and team camps and stuff, it's been good they added that extra quarter per night to get some kids some playing time. So we're seeing improvements that way, you know, carrying over from JV to the varsity court with some of these young guys because they get to play a little more. About a week or two ago, the OHSAA came out and said, hey, if a team wants to play two games in the span of one day, we get no problems with that. 
Now, it's no secret that you guys are, and everyone in Trumbull County, is significantly behind in the amount of games played. Has that temptation crossed your mind where you guys play two games in the span of one day where you you would play a Saturday morning game uh, and then turn around and play a game on Saturday night? I'm not sure it's even been presented to us. I know we don't have any of those. Um, in front of us at this moment. I do know that, for instance, our schedule breaks down where we play tonight, we play Saturday, we're going to play Monday, and we're going to play Tuesday. So really, I mean, I, I know that you know playing two games in one day is a lot, but we're playing as many games in as many days as we can. But I, I just don't think that's even presented itself to us. I know at the junior high level I've seen some, some doubleheaders and, and playing two games just to get as many in uh, as you possibly can. But, but that's not something we've had presented to us. And I, as of now, I don't foresee that. But obviously, with this ever-changing pandemic and environment we're in, it, it could. I just right now, it doesn't look like that's what we're going to do. Well, I mean, that's pretty busy. What you just mentioned, Coach. You're going to be playing tonight, tomorrow night. Uh, Sunday is a day of rest. You're going to play Monday. You're going to play Tuesday. I mean, experience is the best teacher, and sometimes an hour and a half practice can be replaced by a game, and you can learn a heck of a lot more playing a ball game than you can uh, do going an hour and a half of practice. Yeah, and one, one thing, Ron, we've been really preaching to our kids is don't look at the scoreboard right now. You know, we win, loss, tie, it doesn't matter. We, we are going to, you know, take each thing and, and learn from it, each game and learn from it. Um, it's better than being at, at practice for an hour and a half. The kids get to play. It's competition. We're fortunate that we're able to play because I'm sure there's states and schools and areas that aren't playing. So, yeah, we, we're not worried about how many games we're playing, how many days. Um, it, it beats practicing. It beats the repetitiveness of that. It gets them in real situations, and I think that's what's important right now. Not to mention the fact that you'll be in tournament shape uh, when the tournaments come, and I'm sure you've taken a gander at the Super Size Division II tournament. Good Lord, what an impressive uh, uh, group of schools. Yeah, it's it's. I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how it all shakes out with, with this year because, you know, they made the switch for this year, then COVID hits, um, and they kept it that same way. There's going to be long travel. There's going to be teams traveling an hour, whether they're coming to us or going to them. Um, just taking a look, some schools, like we talked about earlier, have eight, nine games, some have 17, 18 already. Um, it's going to be really curious to see, and don't be surprised if you see some early upsets just because, team's record might not indicate how good or bad a team is just because of the games that have been played. How close to you, how close, I should say, are you with getting this team ready for the tournament? We're getting closer. I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, I think this next week or two is really going to show me what we're made of just because we play, we do play a lot of games. Um, but I think a lot of these kids having a, a, an experience last year, varsity, when they were freshmen and sophomores, I think they, they know what's expected. Um, I think we're very close to breaking through and seeing some things that, that we want to see. We've seen it in the last couple games, and, and hopefully that, that that carries on. But we're, we're getting closer on it. Um, I'm excited about the potential this team has here for the next few weeks, that's for sure. Craig Hannon, the head basketball coach of the Girard Indians, joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. How weird has it been? Uh, to not see nearly as many fans and nowhere near uh, a sellout crowd at Girard High School when when your kids take the floor. Oh, it's been. I, I remember the first couple games, and we're used to it now. But oh my goodness, those first couple games. I mean, they felt like scrimmages. You know, it, it, it just and Girard out usually has a good following. And it, it's definitely been uh, a change for for us and for me. You know, even watching games. Um, you know, when we're scouting and. Seeing the empty gyms when normally it would be a big game. I give an example. When we were getting ready to play Poland, we watched Poland and Struthers. Well, that game at Struthers Fieldhouse probably would have had close to 2,500 people. Well, there were probably 25 people in the crowd. Um, you know, those, those things you really, really notice. We played Niles the other night, and there was a decent amount of people in the gym. But normally for a Gerard Niles game, that, that place would have been pretty full, and it's definitely something you, you notice even as an outsider watching a game that isn't your own. Do you find yourself thinking that, okay, there's not a whole lot of, pe- a lot of people here, 
if a kid does something that annoys the living heck out of me, I got to watch my P's and Q's so I don't really embarrass the kid because, let's face it, sellout crowd or a large crowd, they're not going to hear you chastise a kid. But if there's hardly anyone in the in the gym, yeah, you, you're, you're going to be heard, especially if you're yelling at a kid. It, does that thought cross your mind uh, when when someone comes out of the game that did not do a very good job? Uh, you might have to ask my players that one. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the best one. To, you might want to ask them, Steve, if it's, uh, if it's something they've noticed. I, I know that even during my time out, I know I can feel more eyes on me uh, because everyone can hear what I'm saying. But, I, you know, on that end, I, I, I keep it professional. I, I know. I, I think I know what to say and what not to say to kids at this point in my career, but it's definitely something my players might have a different opinion on because it is, as I stated earlier, I'm a very loud guy. And, um, I wear my emotions on my sleeve, so um, m- maybe they'd have a different opinion than I have. Greg, before we let you go, we've talked about the Northeast State. One of the things that I absolutely love about this conference is just the, the competition uh, in all sports. Uh, the competition level from these eight schools is just absolutely incredible. And uh, we talked a little bit about this in the early part of the interview, how important this conference is to get you prepared for the tournament. Uh, I just, it's a meat grinder schedule in boys basketball, that's for sure. Well, it's, it's, it's the best for, for my money at, at our level. You know, most of us are at the Division two level when it comes to tournament time and I think six of the eight schools are Division Two, and the two that are Division Three are Jefferson and South Range. It's, you know, Jefferson's full of talent. Obviously, South Range is well coached and ready to go. So, um, I think it's a well coached league. Um, there's a lot of guys in this league that I respect as coaches, and I, I, I think we admire each other's programs from afar and the things we do. Um, the players are, are always ready to roll. Um, it's just a tough league, and, and if you win in the Northeast days, you're doing something right. I felt that way. This is our third year now, and I felt that way since we got in it, and I still feel that way. If you're winning games in the Northeast day, you're doing something right, and, and I'm proud to be a part of this league, and I, I hope we can continue this relationship in this league for a long time to come. I know you have a really, really young team this year. Uh, senior leadership, how, how have you been leaning on your seniors or your upperclassmen to provide that leadership? Um, well, Nick Cario is the, the, the returning senior we have. and He's done a great job for us. Um, you know, he, he's still he's being put in positions just because we are so young that maybe he's not comfortable with, and he's still learning that, but he's still doing a nice job for us. He, he comes out and plays hard. He sets the tone for us. And um, I'm really proud of the way Nick has handled this year because it is hard playing with a bunch of young guys that are still trying to get their feet wet. But, you know, we, we've made Nick – do a little more than he's normally used to doing, and I think he's handling that very well. You're a team I wouldn't want to play in the first round of the tournament because it's just the wild card in all of this is, all right, if the kids look at this and don't put any pressure on them whatsoever and and they don't care about how bright the spotlight is, you, you your team will pull off an upset or two in the tournament if, if they have that mindset. Well, I hope so, and I, I, I think just with the experience of playing, they'll get better. Uh, it's always about matchups come tournament time, too. Sometimes you draw a great draw, and other times you get a tough matchup. But I, I, I think this year more than ever, just because, one, the Super Districts make it harder, but, two, you don't see as many teams because of COVID. Um, there, there's a lot of unknown element to it, and I think if our kids understand that, you know, we're just going to go out and play and play our hardest, that, you know, no matter what happens, you give someone their best shot in the tournament, any any given night something can happen. So, I'm hoping that's the case, and I'm hoping the kids believe in that as well because now, I sure do. Now, fill me in on something. Do you get the choice of which district you want to go to, or how how does that work, Coach? Yeah, so it'll it'll be ranked. Um, I believe there are. I don't know the exact number. I think it's around 36 teams, or maybe less, maybe maybe less than that. But um, I, I'm pretty sure that there will be two brackets for our our little district. And the number one seed, whoever that may be, gets to go. Then the number two seed gets to go. And the number three and plays himself in one of the two brackets. So as opposed to what it used to be where there was one bracket with 13 or so teams, 
Uh, it might be even 26 teams this year. Yeah, there's you know, 26 like, teams this year, so it's 13 in each bracket. 13, okay. So, so yeah. So. so you get an opportunity to choose which bracket you want to go to. Yep, either one. You can go, you know, whether it's top or bottom, right or left, you can choose either one. Yes, sir. I mean, with all of the talent that is, that is in this tournament, uh, you don't want to – it, it, this is kind of a political game because let's say that uh, you you are given the choice and Cheney's in one side and Poland's in, or Struthers is in the other side, and and you're like, well, I don't want to I, I don't want to play on this bracket. I'm going to go with the other bracket. Well, you know that the team that is the big dog in that bracket's going to look at you and go, oh, okay, you wanted to play us, huh? Mm. I mean, that's it. This is without ticking anyone off. And and I don't think anyone means to do that. You you can you can see where by choosing which side you want to go, you could offend someone. Oh sure, I mean you know that that's always been a part of it though. When when I started at Gerard, we got to pick where you went, and I, I you know I remember being in meetings that we'd go on the board and two or three teams would jump right behind us because LeBray was in our district and no one wanted to play Peyton Aldridge. Well. Being as young and dumb as I was, I didn't take it that way, and I'd let our kids know, hey, these, these teams are ready to play you. Um, they, they, we're taking that as an insult. I think it gives you a little edge. But at the same time, you're on the other end of it, if you're picking where you want to go, you can say, hey, guys, we picked the best matchup. We believe we can win this game. We aren't scared of them, and we're going to go in and give it our best shot. So you can look at it both ways, and same thing this year. You know, you, you can – if Cheney, Struthers, or whoever the top dogs are going on the board and all the teams go in one area, um, you know, you, you can use that as motivation, no question about it. Well, it's a heck of a lot better than back in the day when you when all the coaches met in, in the uh, tournaments and you essentially, to the person's face, said, oh, I'm going to go over here. Uh, I mean, it, it just... Yeah, you, it, when it, I started, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah that's... You, know, you were in a room. I mean, and, I mean that's that can get uncomfortable at times when you sit back and go, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll take this, we'll take this pill." Yeah, I'll, I'll go over and over here, and 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 you're looking dead at that coach saying, "Bring it on, son," because my team's ready. Or you know, you used to vote in person too, where the, the rankings were voted on that day. Yeah. So you know, they would call out the wrong vote, so and so, this number, and you had to have enough guts in that room to maybe put someone below or ahead of you that maybe you beat or they beat you or you feel their schedule wasn't as strong. Um, it, it was definitely a different element when you were sitting in a classroom face-to-face uh, because there was, there was some tension. Now everything's done online and you can hide behind the computer screen. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to see how these super districts break out and how it works out because it's, there's mixed emotions about it, um, but at the same time, I, I'm interested to see how it works. Well, us members of the media still get who everyone uh, seated, so don't do a Dabo Sweeney and, and put someone <laughs> number 11, all right? No, I, you know what? I try, to keep it, I try to keep it fair because I'd end up being like Clemson and vote somewhere where they should. They'll come in and, and beat my butt, and I'll look back and regret it. But, uh, no, I'm going to try to keep it as fair as possible and, and not put an Ohio State 11, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, Craig, best of luck to you the rest of the way. I look forward to seeing the Girard Indians in the tournament. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for having me. Always enjoy the show. Bye. I appreciate it. Craig Hannon, the head basketball coach of the Girard Indians. This is going to be fun. And, oh, yeah, let's let's go over here.